welcome everybody to another edition of The Hard Count. I am your host, Asa Costa, here. This episode is brought to you by Sun City Winelson. For your plumbing needs, take a look at Sun City Winelson Excellence Through Service. Now, today we got a special playoff edition. It's my longtime friend. Haven't seen her since, who was it, June? For the ANA All the Way Charity Softball game. She is currently the Dallas Cowboys beat reporter for the Pro Football Network and also a co-host for Girls Talk, Boys Talk podcast on the DallasCowboys.com website, the lovely Jess Nevada. Jess, welcome my, back, my friend. Hello. I love I love being back. This is exciting, and I miss talking to you. It's been, it's been a minute. Like you said, last time we saw each other was uh, Aaron's uh, softball charity event, which, ironically enough, Micah and Aaron would meet in uh, – postseason so it's gonna be fun exactly it's just crazy how fast time flew like 20 after yeah. like literally from that moment for me 2023 was just like a like a hiccup like like gone i'm like what what do you mean it's ready january <laughs> oh yeah i mean the last 18 seasons or 18 seasons oh my goodness the last 18 weeks of the regular season it feels like 18 seasons with everything that's going on here uh in dallas but the last 18 weeks absolutely flew by i cannot believe we're already in the postseason and uh here talking about the cowboys and the packers getting ready uh for the wild card round that that blew by i blinked and the season was over so uh it's, it's uh it's been fun it's crazy crazy now for those that don't know you are from the city of crosses correct right yes right the yes. new mexican out there so you have the good ties here you know worked here in the news area and then got your opportunity to, you took the jump, right? Going to go to Dallas, mm-hmm. you know, make that leap, leave leave us El Paso media folks behind. <laughs> how was that? <laughs> for, for those that, that, that don't know, how was that process there? Obviously, you know, young, taking that big daring leap to a bigger city, you know, to do what you love. Yeah, you know, so I did. I, I grew up in Las Cruces and went to NMSU. So sorry for me, uh, UTEP minor fans, but go Aggies. Um, and it's so interesting because I always knew I wanted to cover the Cowboys in a sense, uh, even since I was in college. But I got my start doing weather forecasting. And so uh, right before I graduated, KTSM had offered me an internship. And that internship ended up turning into a job. And when you're young and, uh, you know, you're in college and you're not really wanting to do the job search because it's scary and it's really hard when it comes to local news, but you have this job offer. I mean, who was I to say no to doing a job that, you know, I really wanted to learn in and grow in, even if it wasn't sports, I knew it could kind of help me at some point. So was at KTSM for three years. And um, if y'all remember, I ended up doing morning weather for a little while there as well. And then the pandemic kind of hit and, you know, we all just had a lot of time to do a lot of thinking. And um, my train of thought was always, I need to go to Dallas if I want to cover the Cowboys. I I can't do that from here as as much as I love, you know, being around my family and um, being around my friends and and the place where I grew up and and I call home, I just wasn't going to be able to live my dreams over there. And so, when the time finally came and, and, you know, I took the 2021 year to um, work in or 2020 year rather to work in nonprofit with NAMI El Paso it was phenomenal and uh, really got to emphasize mental health, which is something I'm very passionate about. And um, that year it just kind of started my passion project of, of the Rowdy Roundup podcast, which was so fun to even get in the Cowboys landscape that kind of got my foot in the door with networking and building connections with people here in Dallas. And then, um, you know, eventually the opportunity came up to move over here for a job that isn't this one that I'm doing now, but um, I knew that was my shot to get over here. And one thing led to another where I ended up being able to work with Blog and the Boys. I uh, did a podcast with them, a couple podcasts with them actually uh, last year. And then that opportunity uh, because of networking and, you know, really just all of my hard work coming to fruition, I got offered um, the opportunity to co-host uh, the Girls Talk, Boys Talk podcast, which I'm still doing on DallasCowboys.com. And that was the ultimate dream is, is to be able to do that. And so that eventually led me to where I am now with Pro Football Network, uh, getting to cover the Cowboys day in, day out. Definitely not, uh, I guess, the, the, the path most traveled on uh, to get here. But yeah, I absolutely had to take that jump 
it was difficult. It was hard, uh, but I don't regret it. And I've loved even my hard days. I, I still love what I do. And I think it's so important that everybody um, goes through their life like that. When, you know, you, you have a dream, you have a goal, you have to take that jump sometimes. And it's scary and it's definitely not easy. And, um, you know, I had a lot of help and a lot of privilege in, in my life to be able to do that. But I would not change it for the world. And it's been so, so fantastic this season to be able to, to live my dream. That is so awesome. Like you said, taking that jump. Remember, every day above ground is always a good one. So, I mean, it's. Yeah, I love it's, that. It's, uh, it's just so cool to see. I mean, and, you know, obviously the media uh, universe is very, it can be very brutal, right? You know, especially for, yeah. for a woman trying to go there. And then a sport, a sport like yeah. football. And then, oh, yeah, add on, it's the NFL. And then, oh, yeah, it just happens to be the Dallas Cowboys. And, exactly. And but yeah. it's so cool to see you work throughout this whole process and progression to, to get to that level and then still do great stuff. Like I said, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm so happy for you on that, even though it's the Cowboys, you. you know, even though it's the Cowboys, but <laughs> you know, uh, now I'm kind of more like neutral, you know, obviously with all the stuff that I've gotten to do these past, you know, few years and, yeah, you know, working with, with the Elliot's, you know, I, I, that kind of changed my whole perspective, you know, obviously with Aaron and then meeting the other players and, players that are playing the other teams i'm like you know they're they're humans or they're they're cool genuine people mm-hmm. so yep. so to see that you know that whole rivalry when people take it to the extreme i'm like i can't do that anymore i'm, I'm not gonna bash like i'm like yeah no. I was like these guys are cool like even though they play for another team or whatever i was like no I, i'm not be that guy like oh i'm not going to talk to you because you're that no nah, it's exactly it's, it's it's crazy how it, that mindset changed you know by experiencing all that oh yeah and, and you know what? Uh, I think my biggest goal when coming into this landscape was to really emphasize that players are humans first, right? Uh, a lot of people, especially if you grow up being a fan of a team and, you know, you get really clouded by the passion and the love that you have for the sport or the team or the player, you tend to forget that they're also humans. And so being able to go into the locker room the last two years to connect with the players and talk to them has been so special because I get to see that human side of them. And um, you know, sometimes it's, it, it's so weird living this life because I'll be talking about, um, you know, on the podcast, even we'll, we'll talk about conversations we have in the locker room with, uh, the guys. And I'm like, Oh yeah, Dak said this and said this about, uh, you know, our, our tattoo artist being the same person. And, um, it, it's just so funny. The responses I get sometimes, I'm like, wait, you talked to Dak about that. It's like, yeah, he's human, you know, and, and so is everybody else. So it's every other athlete and, and person in this world. And so I really pride my work and myself on emphasizing at the fact that they're humans first. And, um, it, it is, it's really frustrating now. Um, I, I guess seeing the, the backlash and the ugly messages and, and, um, ugly social media comments that these guys get, um, that just have nothing to do with the sport or nothing to do with their performance. Um, because they'll be the first ones to tell you when they mess up. They'll be the first ones to tell you when they need to improve. And, um, when it gets taken beyond the sport and it, it becomes personal, then yeah, that really aggravates me. So I really try to pride my work on, um, putting the human emphasis into, into it to give the guys a, an opportunity to really showcase that they're humans first. Exactly. And that's what I had a conversation because on a side note, obviously the head coaching position here at UTEP changed. And I remember yeah. everybody, you know, bashing or whatever. And I go, y'all don't realize, you know, yes, it's a business. Yes, the team wasn't, you know, successful in, in a sense and whatnot. But do you realize how many lives have just changed automatically? They're like, mm-hmm. well, they're like, what do you mean? Yeah. I go, yes, the head coach got relieved of his duties. But guess what? Now the rest of the staff has to worry what's going to happen with them. Some might have bought a house. They got their kids or wife. They're married. Like now everything's going to change for them on that aspect. And then one of the persons I was talking to, they're like, well, they don't keep them there. I was like, no, each new coaching staff is going to bring their own thing. Like you understand the human element of it. Yes. It's, 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 it's mm-hmm. all the team wasn't doing good, but don't kind of like, you know, have a parade because the person's gone. Cause guess what? 15 coaches just lost their jobs and now they got to find out where they're going to yep. go for next. And then tying yeah, it, tying, and it's crazy. Yeah. And tying it into like the NFL, like uh, I'm glad, I guess uh hard knocks doesn't show like the last days, like when the players are getting cut, you know, cause like yeah. they're, they're, they're working their butts yeah. off and like, you know, yeah, it's entertainment on our side, but for them, you know, that's their livelihood, you know, mm-hmm. now they got to yep. figure out like, what they got to do. And, and, and I just hope, you know, people kind of like, get that human element to it they probably won't but 
you know, from, I guess, our view, since we got to, I guess, be behind the veil and see that it's, it's, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, okay, it's a whole new perspective. Yeah. And it also doesn't impact just them. Most of the time they have families, they have kids, um, and they have to figure out how to move accordingly with the other aspect of their life. And, um, it, it just always gets me because I always feel like people wouldn't treat professional athletes like they do if the roles were reversed. Like, if you're at your, your day-to-day job and somebody went up to you and is like, Hey, you suck at your job and you do this, you do that and make it personal. Like you wouldn't like that, you know? So, um, I always say if you would not tell that person to their face, what you're typing online or what, whatever point you're trying to get across, don't post it online. It's just so not worth it. It's so toxic. And, um, I, I think that's been one of my biggest X, if you will, um, in, in this landscape now, especially, you know, like you mentioned earlier, being a woman in this, in this landscape, covering the Cowboys is not an easy feat. I, I get, uh, really, really, uh, misogynistic comments and, you know, it's, it's crazy. Even just the, the backlash I get sometimes, um, and I'm like, guys, I didn't even play this game. I'm just covering it. I'm just telling you what happened. I can't control it. Um, so yeah, just watch what you say. I, I think that's a little lesson everybody can take away from this today. Exactly. I, one last thing on that, <laughs> like the, the whole money thing, they go, oh, they should take a, a pay cut and blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, cool. Oh, flip the, we're going to yeah. flip the script. Your, your boss comes to you and says, I need you to mm-hmm. take a $15,000 pay cut you know, yep. so we can do this. Would you do it? They're like, uh, well, no, Heck that's no. not right. And I was like, same <laughs> scenario, just different, different. Uh, amounts of apples and oranges and they're like exactly it is it is what it is now let's talk to me about your first season now here um official well, i guess officially with pro football network being on that beat report what has that been like like you know the butterfly is obviously going on from like say game one but can you like kind of like tra- t- take us back to like all right i'm here like whoa <laughs> yeah you know what's so interesting um is I grew up a Cowboys fan and, you know, I kind of made my whole Twitter online persona being a fan. And when you get hired to do a professional job, you can't be a fan. And um, I think the, the most difficult transition for me was kind of differentiating what being a fan is and covering the game from very neutral perspective is, even though, you know, I grew up watching these players and I, a couple of years ago was a fan at the games watching them and cheering for them, you know? So I, I think that was kind of the hardest transition for me. And that kind of started last year with the podcast. So this year, you know, getting to go to games and get credentials for games and go cover the games and um, continue my work every week and, and go in the locker room and talking to them and um, getting interviews for stories and doing all of that. I, I've kind of, I, I, I don't want to say I've lost track of, what I do because I'm very grateful for it and, and I get to do it. And um, I understand I'm in a very lucky position to be able to do that, but it, it just feels like a job to me now, if that makes sense. Like it's a very cool job. It has a lot of really cool perks and, and, you know, it's, it sounds very glamorous, but the reality of this job is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of long hours, long days, unconventional work, uh, unconventional hours. And, you know, during the season, like I really don't get full weekends. And so, um, yeah, for me this year I was, I don't know what a weekend exactly. is. Exactly. I don't know what a day off is. <laughs> exactly. And so m- adjusting my lifestyle to that, I think has been the most difficult thing, but overall, I mean, I would not change what I'm doing for the world. It's been so phenomenal to be able to cover this team and especially with the season they're having it makes it even more fun right when they're winning and they're at the top of the league and um they're in the playoff discussion then they clinch their playoff berth and then you know now we know kind of their playoff date where it starts but um it's been it's been a year of learning for me and and i'm not ashamed to admit that because it's, it's my first year uh covering a professional team and covering the cowboys at that um and it comes with growing pains and it comes with a lot of, um, you know, lessons that you learn the hard way. And so luckily, you know, my, my, uh, bosses at PFN have just been really supportive of my mental health and, and my growing pains and, and learning with me and us learning together because it's been new for all of us. This is the first year that PFN has had beat reporters 
on scene. And so we're all learning together. We're all trying to figure out what works, what's realistic. And I'm just really grateful that they've given me the opportunity uh, to work with them and, and not necessarily make it uh, a harder situation than what it is because it's a very difficult job. But like I said, it's, it's been such a dream come true. And um, I, I'm so excited. Hopefully, you know, they have a long playoff run so I can continue to cover them. But uh, the last 18 weeks have just been, they've gone by fast, but every day, like I said, even the low lows and the hard days, I'm still so happy that this is what I get to do every day. Right. And like, I know what I do, like, you know, like you said, you got to be neutral on this thing. Like, unless, unless you're working, say for the Cowboys or like, say you're working for UTEP or whatever, then you can cheer to, to, to a point. But like, for me, right. I, just, I just learned how to giggle inside and like, you know, celebrate inside, you know, like, like, cause you can't show it on, you know, on the outside, but you know, inside you're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right and when you're in a press box you can't react yeah, you, can't you know react and, I, and I think <laughs> a lot of people have that so misconstrued of when you're covering a team and you know kind of what I've learned this season is um when I tell people what I do or, or they don't know or even if they do and they're asking me about it they're like it must be such a fun job you get to go to games and do all this I do I it's fun but it's not fun in the way you think it is being a fan you know it, it's fun that I get to cover the team but I'm in a press box a quiet press box uh, when big plays happen, you can't respond. I'm working. I'm multitasking. I'm watching the game while also typing a story and tweeting and, you know, staying up to date with everything and keeping an eye on if there's injuries. And um, it, it's a different kind of fun for me. And I, and like I talked about earlier, I had to differentiate what it was to be a fan as to being a, a working journalist in this space. And so, um, you know, the, the best advice I can give people that, that maybe want to lean into this career is, I think it's okay to be a fan, but don't let the fandom lead you in your work, right? You you have to be neutral and, and you have to understand that there are two different things of being a fan and working in this. And so a lot of the times too, like I, I've noticed people don't take my job serious because they're, they see sports and football and, and the Cowboys, if that's their favorite team is something fun for them. Right. And so for me, yes, it's fun because it's, my job and what I love to do. And I'm very passionate about it, but it's not fun in the way of being a fan and going to the game and getting to eat all the good food and drink all the good drinks and cheer loud and, you know, smack talk with the fan next to you. Like I'm not doing that when I'm at games. And, and it's just so funny that, um, sometimes I have to explain that to people like, no, I'm in a quiet press box during games. I'm kind of on my computer and half watching the game, half typing. And, um, you know, all that to say, just, it's it's been such a fun year, uh, full of a lot of lessons in a lot of different ways. <laughs> I think people would just like that whole press box thing. Like it's quiet. People are like, what? Like it's quiet. Like, yeah, it's, it's a it, working room. People like, don't believe me. They're like, what do you yeah, mean? Like, you, exactly. They'll they'll warn you once if you if you cheer. Mm-hmm. Second one, you're out, and you're like, what? Like no, yeah, you can't. exactly. <laughs> I go and it's it's weird. Like people are like, what? and I was like, but like you said, it's the it's it's the environment. You know, the excitement and people just think that all that goes in there. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on, but we still have a task to do. Um, Mm -hmm. we got to hit that task. And, and and the, and the cool thing is, even though as hard as it is, it's not for everybody. And, and that's the, and that's the beauty of it. Like people be like, Oh, well, you do this. And all right, cool. Yeah. That's what you think. Cool. But y'all can't do it either. If not, you'll try, you know, or, or try to work there. So it's, it's good. Like I said, it's, like I said, bring in that experience. Like for me, I always loved, you know, being an athlete, you know, in high school and whatnot, that needed something to fill that adrenaline rush, right? You know, mm-hmm. the adrenaline junkie. Since I can't play the sport anymore, at least being part of it in some form, like, okay, it's game day. My prep, you know, my prep's different. I'm not putting on a helmet. Okay, I'm getting my gear ready. Like, getting that kind of mindset, you know, having like a game plan. What am I going to try to shoot this uh, this uh, game? And what, I'm gonna, what story I'm going to try to tell, you know, with my footage and stuff like that kind of it fills that 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 uh addiction of that adrenaline like you know okay and that's the mindset i i I take into it like okay soak it all in tell the story you know be part of the event even though they're not coming to see you but i'm still part of the event you know i'm not a spectator right and it's jaded me so much because now when you sit like regular (laughs) regular seat tickets you're like yeah why do i gotta be way up here can't be down there like (laughs) you know what's so crazy is i was just talking about this the other day is um, 
I, I was telling my boyfriend, I feel so weird now because when I would go to games as a, as a fan, like keep in mind, Ace, I hated football growing up. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that to you. I hated football. I thought it was the dumbest thing. And my dad is an avid Cowboys fan and, and my brother, they'd be screaming at the TV every Sunday. And I'm like, what's the big deal guys? Like chill. What, what are we doing here? They don't even use their um, feet. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is going on? Like, okay. Um, and so I remember when AT&T stadium opened up, my dad took me to my first Cowboys game. And I'm not kidding. When I say the moment I walked in there, the game started, like my whole life changed. And I was, I think a freshman in high school uh, at this point, And I like knew, I, I just told myself, I have to do this one day. I have to come back here. And I, I, since then kind of had tunnel vision to get to where I am now, which is so crazy because I feel like that even goes to the conversation of like my inner child just is so fulfilled with, with what I've done. But um, all that to say, I grew up going to games and being a fan and loving it so much that it changed the trajectory of my career and my life. But now I was just telling, you know, my boyfriend the other day, I love covering games even more to where I can't, I, I obviously would, would enjoy going to games because it's football and, and who doesn't love going to a game, but I have found a new love for the sport, which is covering it and being able to tell stories. That's truly where my love lies uh, with this sport now. And so it's just been so interesting to even see that love evolve from fandom watching games to uh, journalists covering games and getting the stories and telling the stories from my point of view and my eyes. Um, so it's been interesting. It's been a crazy year that uh, has really taught me a lot. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. For me, it's like when you go on a working part, you know, you get the, the my biggest thing is the parking pass right? Like, all right, cool. I got parking. Like, okay, we're at Oklahoma. Cool. We got the parking pass. When I go as a fan, I'm like, man, got to go where we park and parking, you know, a mile away and paying $70 for parking. You're like, oh, can I get a credential so I can get a parking pass? <laughs> Just the little things for me. It's like, yeah, parking pass. Oh, really yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, so let's, let's tie in here. Um, Cowboys have had a great season ups and downs, obviously, because as you're being looked at, you know, Early on, you guys, they started out very hot and couldn't win some of the big games here. From that perspective, what was the team's, like, kind of environment there, what you saw early on, leading to what they're at you know, now? Yeah, so it's so interesting because the Cowboys went through an offseason full of change, um, specifically the offensive side of the ball. And that takes adjusting, too, because I think sometimes when you look at how things – you know, have played out. It, it's not just black and white. Like people like to think there's always a backstory and this goes for any team, but you know, my job covering the Cowboys is to tell you like they are, they went through so many off chain off season changes. And, and that started with one, a new offensive coordinator and Brian Schottenheimer previously Kellen Moore, who was younger. Um, and you saw the offensive struggles that the Cowboys had last year. I mean, there was a lot of miscues, miscommunications, um, Dak Prescott had a career high interception number because of that. And it wasn't on him. I, it really, it came down to the offensive scheme when you go back and you really look at it. Um, so not only did you have a new hire of offensive coordinator, but Mike McCarthy took over the play calling, which was very interesting that your offensive coordinator wasn't going to be doing it, but I had a lot of faith in what McCarthy would be able to do. And so they, they had to kind of, go back to the drawing board, reassess what their scheme was. And they came up with this new West coast scheme system, which is very pass heavy. And if you look historically at what the Cowboys have been doing the last few years, it's run heavy. Um, you had a lot of off season personnel changes. You didn't have Ezekiel Elliott anymore, which has been your one back since really his first day with the Cowboys. And, and um, you know, that changes the locker room in the sense that it's Ezekiel Elliott. He's a very predominant guy in that locker room, you had some off off season additions. You had Stephon Gilmore and Brandon cooks that came to the Cowboys via trade. There was just a lot of changes uh, really going on. And so from the start of the season, it, it was going to be growing pains. And um, I think that's kind of what you saw is the first half of the season before their bye week and week nine, you, you saw, 
the growing pains and the adjustments that McCarthy had to make as a play caller and just the ongoing conversation that these guys had to have with McCarthy to say what was working and what wasn't. Because another factor in that was you have CeeDee Lamb, who's your wide receiver one, that wasn't getting the attention that he needed as your starting receiver. And so the loss to the 49ers and the bye week following that was the most pivotal moment in this Cowboy season, because not only did Mike McCarthy sit back, readjust, uh, look at what was working, look at what wasn't, but he got, you know, C.D. Lamb more involved, and you can see how much that paid out. Uh, you're, you're seeing a very confident Zach Prescott who's playing the best football that arguably he's ever played uh, under Mike McCarthy, and that's also, you know, a testament of not only the work that they put in on the field, but how Mike McCarthy treats his players. He puts their well-being first. He's very uh, player first, mental health first for these guys. And so every Thursday they have these quarterback meetings with Dak and Mike in the quarterback room and all of the coaching staff with that. And Mike actually talked about this week how just important that that meeting every week has been uh, not only to come up with the game plan and the scheme for the week and kind of tie a bow on things since it's on Thursday and later in the week, but Um, They talk about life in there, too. So a really big, um, I guess, constant throughout the season that that I've heard and uh, I've heard over and over is play caller purpose and knowing your why. And I think what you're seeing this season is guys know their why. They know where where they need to be, why they need to be there. And they know the reason behind each play call because they've been involved in coming up with this new scheme with Mike. And so... Um, you know, it's it's been a, a season full of ups and downs, five losses, which all five losses have a few things in common, which one, no turnovers from the defense, two, lack of run defense. When teams are running all over uh, the Cowboys defense on the offensive side of the ball, it was lack of run game from your running, uh, your running backs who they're in their first season of kind of figuring out, um, you know, how things fall with Tony Pollard being the first guy, Rico Dowdle being the second. So, it was a lot of off-season changes that led into the progression that you're seeing. But honestly, um, when the Cowboys suffered the losses to the Bills and the Dolphins, their first back-to-back losses in 2021, um, that changed that. That changed the trajectory, I think, of what you're going to see going forward for the Cowboys because they needed to kind of go back to their basics, figure out what they needed to work on and why things weren't working, and they've done that. And I know people are going to say they beat the commanders. The team was four and 12 going into that last game, but you saw the confidence boost that they needed going into the, po- the postseason. So uh, I know that's a very long winded answer, but it's been a very busy season in Dallas. And, and I don't really think there was such thing as a short one for that, but all that to say the Cowboys have absolutely made uh, the best of the changes that they had, whether it be good or bad. Uh, also not to mention the injuries that they, they had throughout the course of the season, losing Trayvon Diggs early on on a random Thursday practice. They lost Leighton Van Der Esch, who we don't know if he's, you know, even going to call it a career at this point, having that neck injury or not. They lost to Marvin Overshone, who was a very promising rookie, lost him in the preseason. Uh, they lost John Stevens Jr., who is a tight end. They lost him in training camp. So, A lot of injuries, a lot of things going on. Um, But overall, you're seeing a very strong Cowboys team that personally I I think has the best chance they've ever had going into the the postseason now. Exactly. And what people don't still realize, all these teams are professionals. They ain't just no, you know, I guess, what is it, cornflakes. Like, these are good athletes and they're all trying to compete and win. So, yeah, teams are going to, you know, you have losses and, you know, bad days. I mean, that's the sport, you know. Yeah. <laughs> nobody's – since the since the Dolphins, nobody's been uh, undefeated. Even uh, Tom Brady and Randy Moss, you know, got mm-hmm. stopped on that. Like, and, and that's the beauty of it. People just, you know, are just so dramatic <laughs> when it comes to that. And, oh, for and, sure. And, 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 and I, I also think is. how people adjust and bounce back from losses should determine how much that loss really meant, right? So – Um, every single time, like I said, it wasn't until the Bills and Dolphins that back-to-back losses that the Cowboys have suffered back-to-back losses since 2021. Let that sink in. That since 2021, and guess who was head coach at that point? Mike McCarthy. um, The Cowboys had not suffered back-to-back losses. And so, obviously, that ate at them, that bothered them, and they knew going into the last couple of weeks of the season with the Lions and the Commanders, they weren't going to feel that way again. 
Um, another kind of struggle that they've had this season is winning on the road. And so it was vital, vital for them to win those last two games, especially since the Eagles pretty much handed the NFC East to them on a silver platter uh, by falling apart the last few weeks of the season. And so, um, exactly. yeah, all that to say, you're, you're so right. You are so right that losses happen and uh, there's no need to think the sky is falling every time a loss happens. You are correct. Exactly. And like going into that Philadelphia situation, what is happening over there? They went from Cowboys broke them. <laughs> they, 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 they went from team of the, the, the year to coach of the year to now hearing rumors that these coaches are fighting for their, for, for their yeah. jobs on that. And, but that's the beauty of the game though. Like I said, that momentum mm-hmm. and, and, and how you finish and all right, we, it's, you just need to get to the dance. I mean, it's, and the dance yeah. is, the dance is here. And like I said, your Dallas Cowboys, obviously good, bad, and indifferent because the fan base is going to be the fan base. It's just like the Steeler fan base. And of course, like the Packers fan base, you know, it's always, it's always mainstream when, when any of those teams are on. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and I think too, um, as far as the Eagles go, and it, it's so interesting because I, I think teams peak at a certain point uh, in their season. And I said, Gosh, when they were doing so good, they're the only undefeated team left in the NFL. I said, it is just a matter of time because you could see up until that they until their first loss, the wheels were starting to fall off a little bit. People were starting to figure them out. And that's the thing about really good teams that makes them good or, you know, make them kind of like what has happened to the Eagles, predictable. Um, you get good tape on the, the further the season goes on, teams get tape on other teams, on how to defeat them, what their weaknesses are. And if you're not willing to adjust as a coach to your game plan, to your scheme, to keep that fresh and keep it unpredictable, people are going to figure you out. They're going to hone in on your weaknesses and they're going to continue to attack that. And I just think as far as the Eagles go, they haven't been willing to adjust what they're doing enough to prevent kind of putting themselves in this position. And now you're going into the postseason not only just frustrated on how the last few weeks have played out with losses, but also you have injuries now to worry about because you were trying to fight for your life there in the last game. Eagles suffered three massive injuries that can definitely impact the course uh, of how they play this weekend. And so uh, all I can say is uh, I am very glad that the Cowboys are not in that situation and that they adjusted to their weaknesses and yes, they still have weaknesses, but I think every team going into the playoffs have have some kind of weakness. Um, it's just a matter of how they adjust, and they continually adjust throughout the games that set them apart from good teams to great teams. Exactly, whoever can execute the best and the one that has the ball at the end, where it looks like you know in this day and age, like mm-hmm. but, but ex- executing that uh, looks good on paper, but mano mano, who wants it more? You know, yeah, every play, like I said. Uh, the price to win changes every every second in in, the, in this round, and which is good too. And then obviously, since you guys get a home game, don't have to travel to the to the East Coast because boy, is it cold over there. It's I know Ooh. we're we're talking uh, yeah. before we started how cold it is in obviously Dallas and area and, and, and El Paso, but yeah. ain't nothing like you know Philly and and Pittsburgh, oh, and Cleveland, no. yep. <laughs> and like <laughs> Buffalo. I see all the snow flurries and stuff like that oh. now. Yeah, we'll we'll stick to our little two hours of like you know thirty degree weather for a little bit. And exactly, the sun's gonna shine. It's 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 not all white there. Now, got a historic rivalry coming into your guys' building, the Green Bay Packers. It hasn't been good for the for the Cowboys these past couple of years. Um, one, how excited are you as a journalist to cover a good game? Mm-hmm. And then two, on the flip side. Because you know the other both players, obviously, and teams on that. How, how on the fan side, how excited are you for this game? Yeah, you know, I I think what's so cool about this game is we always joke about the NFL script writers being so good uh, with how they've had the playoffs, especially on the NFC side, uh, play out this season. Um, but what's really cool about this game is the first thing that came to I think everybody's mind journalist or not, journalist, fan, you know, casual viewer of the Cowboys and knowing the history that the Cowboys have with the Packers was, oh, this is a great matchup. Uh, Historically, the Packers have knocked the Cowboys out 
of the playoffs, you know, 2014, 2016, in the most heart wrenching, heartbreaking ways. Um, but also, you go back to last season, and that was Mike McCarthy's first time going back to Lambeau Field since his tenure ended uh, with the Packers. And getting to that point, I remember that week of the of that game. He was very raw, very honest about the emotions that it was having uh, on him to go back to his previous team and go and and face them on the other side of the sideline being in the away locker room and it's emotional you know this, this is somebody's life who he spent the majority of his coaching career there and then it it, it ended and he was with the Cowboys now and um so it, it was a lot and the Cowboys couldn't come out with a win a uh, very again heartbreaking loss in in overtime last season for that game but um what I think is so interesting and so exciting about this game is, you know, I was there to cover that game last year. And although it wasn't a playoff game, it kind of felt like it. Anytime these two teams play, it feels like a playoff game. Uh, it's just exciting that now it is again. The Cowboys had the chance to rewrite history and they have a chance to shut down the narrative, especially in the new Jordan Love era, that the Packers don't always have to defeat the Cowboys and that the Cowboys can kind of take destiny into their own hands and defeat a, a boogeyman of such, if you will, for them. And not only that, but Mike McCarthy is taking, he talked about this yesterday, he's taking an approach with this game of saying, I'm not discussing my history with the Packers. I'm not getting into the drama of it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who we played in this game. We just want to win. And, you know, he, he said he regretted even doing that last year for the regular season game when they played the Packers of oversharing and being so emotional about it. But he said he's glad that that's out of the way because now all they want to do is focus on winning. And I will say being in the building both, both times uh, from last year to even this week, very different feeling, very even keeled, very laser focused on what they have ahead of them. Um, so I, I really think it's the Cowboys chance to rewrite history. And not only that, but this Cowboys team has the potential to be the team that finally breaks that 30 year dry spell of not making it to an NFC championship game It's in 30 years. Cowboys fans are frustrated. Jerry Jones obviously wants to get there. And I really think if not now when, because it's really hard as a journalist to not start, not to start thinking ahead of uh, what the off season will look like. And, you know, you have a laundry list of free agents. You have guys you need to make deals with. You already have, you know, uh, other teams requesting to interview Dan Quinn and Will McClay. And you just don't know how your personnel will look the same. So you have to do it now or it's not going to happen because really your team could look different again uh, next year. So I'm really excited to cover this game, but also I – if they have the opportunity to continue to advance forward, I really, I have faith in, in what I've seen and the conversations I've had with coaches and players that they are capable of being that team this year to continue to push it through uh, to break that dry spell. It's it's going to be a good one. People better get their popcorn ready because it, it, it's in a, a – no pun intended. Well, actually, yes, pun intended. It's going to be showtime out there. It's going to be good for both. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a perfect pun. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. I mean, both teams are on a momentum here. Obviously, for the Packers, you know, after, you know, shipping out Rodgers and young team, I think they're, I think they have 15 players that were born after the year 2000, making me feel really old. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be good. And then, like you said, that, that defense for the Cowboys there. You know, it's going to be, like I said, execution. Who can execute the most and who can make the least amount of turnovers? Get another date in destiny the next following week. It's going to be a good one. Like I said, we're we're trying mm -hmm. we're trying to get out there. That's Jerry World's always a magnificent sight out there. I mean, what is it like the Taj Mahal here in the <laughs> in the North American area? But you know, just that that atmosphere is going to be good. And and like you said, the the script writers, you know, how they wrote, you know, these playoff <laughs> seasons. I, I think I saw a meme on that too. They, you know, they got Cleveland going to um, play in Houston where Deshaun Watson was. And then uh -huh. you know, 
Um, I think Matt uh, Stafford going Matt, back to, to Detroit. Yeah, play, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It yeah. is crazy. It's, it's a good one. That's what we want our money's worth. You want you want to see some good, you know, good Heck action yeah. out there. Good action. We, Absolutely. We, you know, may the best teams win. You know, wherever the ball you know falls, but it's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm excited for you being able to cover that. And like you said, this part of history, like you said, you guys got a great team right now. If not now, when? Like you know, everybody's been mm-hmm. saying. Um, and then that Packer team's got some new, like I said, youth uh, re- rejuvenation out there. And then yeah, and then we got a little certain somebody that that's trying to prove a point as well. And he's had a great great time in Dallas as well. Every time he's gone out there, so I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to here. see. I'm excited to see that and see see where, like I said, where the ball lies on that. Um, it's, it's 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 here <laughs> as fast as it can. It it's, is. It's we here. are in the postseason. It is here, and I cannot believe it. It's it, and it feels so different. Um, even walking into the star this week, you can just feel the energy. You can feel the urgency. It's postseason. Everybody can feel it. And you know, it's um, we haven't gotten to talk to the guys this week yet. That comes on Wednesday and Thursday, but. Um, it, it really feels like, you know, to give any Cowboys fans a sense of relief based on even conversations I've had with weeks prior uh, with the coaches and the players, it really feels like the Cowboys know what's at stake here. They know the talent that they have on this team and they don't want to waste it. They don't want to go down as another team that uh, couldn't get past that boogeyman of a divisional round they want to be the team that breaks that. And, you know, like like I just said, you don't know how different the personnel will look next year. You can't risk not getting to that point this season. You just can't. Exactly. It's going to be fun. Like I said, I'm excited for you. And then I just got to add, go, Pat, go. But yeah, let's, it's, going to be, <laughs> it's going to be a good one. So, Jess, like I said, I appreciate you coming out here, you know, spilling some good info here for, oh, Cowboys Nation and Football Nation. Like I said, doesn't matter if you're male or female. As long as you're a professional and, and doing and trying to master your craft, that's the best thing that 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 can go for anybody. And you're doing a great job. Um, I don't, Thank look, I don't, you I, don't so look, I don't look at the gender parts. Is what are you saying? What is it about? You know, you know your stuff. Hey, that's that's the main thing. Like I, for me, I talk to a penguin, so it's, it doesn't matter if you're a boy <laughs> or girl. But but <laughs> like I said, I appreciate you for coming out on there on here. Like I said, it's it's gonna be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. I'm crossing my fingers. I'll make it out there in some shape, shape or form. But uh, tell people where they can uh, follow you and, and and stay up to date, especially, like I said, with all the projects that you got going on. Yeah, sure. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, I don't really know what we're calling it anymore. I just call it uh, Twitter that's from X. The, <laughs> I, it's Twitter X. There you go. Uh, I'm the most active on there at Jessivars underscore. You can find me at the same name on Instagram if you feel like going there. Um, all my articles are on profilebonnetwork.com. I write a lot. My whole life is writing. So uh, if you want to catch up on the stories that um, going into this game, what's going on at the Star, like I said, I'll be there all week, uh, really covering everything and seeing what the vibe of the locker room is. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can catch Girls Talk Boys Talk on DallasCowboys.com every Monday through Thursday at 4 o'clock Central Time. Um, and that's pretty much my life is uh, talk about the Cowboys, hang out with my dogs and repeat and get some sleep if I can. That's, and listen to Taylor Swift. How could I forget? Right. That's, sleep that's with my home. life on repeat. What, what sleep? <laughs> I know the Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yeah, that's a whole nother. She was there when I was at the Packer <laughs> game. So that was, that was cool. Oh man. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah, right. Lucky good. you. It was good. I saw her from, a, from afar, <laughs> like opposite oh. side of the stadium. But love her, <laughs> love her so much. <laughs> it's good, but like I said, I appreciate it. Everything, Jess, we're so proud of you here. And like I said, everybody, follow Jess. Like I said, especially for the Cowboys, you know, stuff like real good information, not your just on oh, looking for clicks and we're gonna be controversial. No, this is good, good genuine <laughs> reporting, right? But thank you so much. <laughs> so, the, thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Hard Count. Remember, you can uh, tune in at dpsportsnetwork.com and follow us for all your sports and entertainment. See you guys next time.